The Heritage of Alaska. Brought to you in the public interest by the National Bank of Alaska. Here is your host, Elmer Rasmussen. One of the most promising experiments in our northern civilization is now taking place on the University of Alaska campus. This experiment involves a dedicated man named John Teal, Jr., and 38 muskoxen, those odd creatures that look like hangovers from the Stone Age. Since 1954, of northern agricultural research has devoted his life to the musk ox. His program is one, to preserve the musk ox from extermination. Two, to mastermind the domestic breeding of the musk ox. And three, to bring about a great social change in the Arctic regions around the world. Fortunately, today the musk oxen are protected by international treaty. There are over 400 animals on Nunavak Island and 38 on the University of Alaska campus. There are herds in Greenland, in Upper Canada, and Norway. John Teal is establishing beyond a scientific doubt that the musk ox can be domesticated. When wild, the normal lactation period of the musk ox is on a two-year basis. But at the university farm, with proper care and feeding, calves are weaned in three months. The breeding cycle is now one year, and production has doubled. Contrary to fanciful stories, the musk oxen are friendly creatures. They respond quickly to care and attention. When the Teal family go swimming, the musk oxen insist on joining in the fun in the old swimming hole. The significance of the musk ox program is this. About one twentieth of the world's land surface is in the Arctic. At present, its economic value is undeveloped. But Teal is convinced that the Arctic can be expanded for permanent settlement with herds of domesticated musk oxen. These shaggy creatures, he believes, can bring about a social change on the northern slopes of Alaska, Canada, Greenland, and Norway by giving the Eskimos a self-sufficient, highly productive economy. What makes this unprepossessing looking animal so valuable? It is the commercial value of the six pounds of gossamer silky wool he produces each year and sheds in the summertime. This wool is called kiviat, spelled Q-I-V-I-U-T. It is much finer, lighter, longer fibered, and infinitely warmer than cashmere. One pound of kiviat spun in a standard 40-strand thread will give a thread nearly 25 miles long. Kiviat, when put on the market, will sell for $50 per pound, producing an annual cash crop of up to $300 per musk ox. Already, fabric manufacturers the world over are requesting that their orders be put on file. I have the first scarf of Kiviat woven at the University of Alaska. Like other garments, made from this wool, it's so light, you scarcely know you have it on, and so warm, it's ideal for extremely cold weather. As president of the Board of Regents of the University of Alaska, I salute John Teal for his dedication, his zeal, and his contribution to civilization in Alaska and the Arctic regions of the world. The Heritage of Alaska has been brought to you in the public interest by the National Bank of Alaska, your statewide banking institution with 21 locations to serve you. Be with Elmer Rasmussen again next week at this same time when he relates another story in The Heritage of Alaska. <laughs>